Um, okay, welcome to episode 44 of the No Shelf Control podcast. I'm Lindsay Sparks here with my lovely co author and co host, Lindsay Pogue. Greetings. Uh, so, a couple of things. Um, before we dive in, I, of course, want to remind everybody that this is absolutely 100% not a spoiler free zone, especially this episode. <laughs> extra spoilers yeah um lots lots and lots um and also this is our first episode where we are assuming everything goes all right going to have a video version Ooh, lucky everybody <laughs> <laughs> um yeah so i think that means that we'll probably posted in our Facebook group and on YouTube is my guess, uh, but we'll see. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, I'm still supposed to be saying things. What is it? Oh, our guest this episode <laughs> is <laughs> us. Yes. Yay. Um, so today we are chatting about the ending series. <laughs> um, okay. But before we get to that, um, tell me what you're drinking. So I have bubbles tonight. Um, Ooh. so just for everybody, we're on the West coast and it is eight to 12 PM. So it is. it is perfect time for drinking. It is the drinking hour. Um, so do you have, so do you have Gloria Ferrer there? Bubbles at the store? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, I wasn't sure because I know, I mean, it's here, so I didn't know if they- No, Gloria's there. big. Yeah, okay. Anyway, so she, anyway, there's a, anyway. Yeah, so <laughs> I'm drinking, there's a new uh, Brut Rosé that I'm trying, so mm. um, let's be clear. I didn't go to the winery. I didn't do anything fancy. It's from Costco. <laughs> <laughs> so, nice. That's what I'm drinking, but it sounded refreshing, so. It does sound refreshing. Cheers. How about you? What are you drinking? Um, I'm drinking a very full glass very full oh yeah mm -hmm. it's not as big as it looks to you. it's not that big uh, i'll hold it really close to the camera it'll be enormous well why that's funny is because i actually have a giant you do glass. have a giant glass so i probably have <laughs> more than you and i don't know it <laughs> um, anyway oh. uh yeah so um i am drinking a janic um cab uh, I want to say like 2018, maybe. Um, Janik is one of my favorite Washington wineries. Um, and I'm really excited because I'm going to be going there to go wine tasting for the first time in like, I think since I got married. <laughs> wow. Where's that Are one? We going is it wine Woodville? tasting? Woodenville? In Woodenville. Yeah. Woodenville. Um, for my birthday. Awesome. Yay. Yeah. That's really awesome. Yeah. That's not the same place that your mom loves. That's in the Nicole place, right? Or something. Alexandria and Nicole. Alexandria. I knew. Which yeah. we are not going to. I do belong to their wine club as well. Um, but their tasting hours were not um copacetic. Yes. And it's this is gonna be um also my first like pandemic wine tasting experience. So in Washington now, uh we have a like I feel like this is just a Washington thing. Maybe it's national. I don't know. Um, but we have like, you have to have proof of vaccination to go into like public places. Oh yeah. Um, I don't have that. Or at least like and restaurants Valley. and wineries and stuff like mm -hmm. that. Um, so uh, this will be my first experience with having to like show my proof of vaccination and stuff. So yeah. Yeah. Can I just say why we're talking about that? So I'm flying out on Sunday for a retreat that I was talking to you about with uh, Camille, who was on mm -hmm. the show last time, and Anne, who has been on the show, Giver. And so I keep triple checking because I'm so nervous. So, you know, I went to Mexico for that wedding and it was mm -hmm. like a cluster because we had to figure out before we left, we had to time our um, COVID test perfectly. Like you ha only have so many hours, but then you have to get it taken before, you know, two days before to make sure you have it in time, but it can't mm -hmm. be too early, blah, blah, blah. But then we had to do it while we were in, in Mexico too. So it's like, you have to time everything perfectly. And so I was all prepared to have to do that, to fly to the East coast. And according to all the websites, I don't have to do that. I just have to show my vaccine card, which I haven't had to show anybody yet. So I'm like, 
I keep checking, rechecking everything. Cause I'm like, is this real? Because if I don't get tested and I show up at the airport and they require a freaking test result, I'm going to freak out. So I'm really hoping that that's not a thing anymore. So anyway, that's just I, speaking of vaccine card, it's going to be the first time I've had to use it. So yeah, let's hope that's all I really need. Yeah. It's going to be my first time too. So um, yours know. is a bigger deal. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, it's not quite as big as when Dennis and I showed up at the airport to go to Australia for our wedding slash honeymoon. And as we were trying to, we were, we were at the kiosk and we were trying to get our tickets and the attendant was like, so do you have your visa to go there? And then we're like, we're only going to be there for a week. And they said, oh, you have to have one to be in Australia. And we were, we were like ready to be gone for three weeks. We had all of our stuff. We had all of our, our thousands of dollars in tickets, right? Like, oh my God. And then he's like, it's okay. We can take care of it in two minutes. I was like, okay, you should probably lead with that <laughs> because <laughs> that was really stressful for, I was, at a heart attack. I was at a heart attack. <laughs> oh, I almost missed my own wedding and everybody's <laughs> probably already there. Oh my God. Anyway. So yeah, that would be really bad, but anyway, I'm sorry. More more tangents. Now everyone can just see how red I get when I laugh too hard and feel all embarrassed. So <laughs> fantastic. Moving on. <sighs> oh. <clears throat> um, yeah. So, um, what are you working on right now? Mm. Are you writing? Uh, the last two days I have gotten a chapter done, which is more than I can say for the last month of my life, a uh, month and a half, maybe more like two months. Uh, yeah. So I am working on the first book in the ruin lands. So, um, I'm getting really excited about it too. I just, I'm going to be gone all next week. And then I come back to a book release. So I'm trying really hard to be proactive and preemptive and have, everything I possibly can taken care of. Um, so I've been just really distracted and trying to be focused with that, but I also really want to write and I need to write. So, um, and there's this whole, you know, part of not having any internet service while I'm there. So I'm like, what do I need to download onto my actual computer so that I can actually work on stuff? Because I do everything in Google Docs. Yeah. So, um, I'm just worried I'm going to forget something huge and I'm going to get there and be like twiddling my thumbs for a week because I didn't bring something really important that I needed or something like that. But anyway, yeah. anyway, yeah, that's kind of, I'm kind of all over the place, but that's what I've been sort of focusing on. How about you? I am in draft two of, um, like in the middle of creating draft two of uh, Song of Scarabs and Fallen Stars, which is the first book in the Fateless trilogy, which is a third series in the Echo World. <laughs> um, and I'm like, I feel like I've talked about this 8 million thousand times, um, but <laughs> I am so into this book. Um, and this is the, I like have this playlist uh, and I think it was yesterday. I was, yesterday I was doing some like admin-y stuff in the afternoon. And so I had like my playlist going in the background and I actually like organized it by scenes. And so oh, now, wow. yeah. <laughs> uh, that's intense. So now I have it like chronolo in the chronological order of, there's like 40 songs in here there. And it's in chronological order of the chapter or the scenes that it, it each song goes to in this book. And like, I'm this this playlist is I'm not a rights with music person and this playlist is so um like a part of this story that it has like the song some of those songs have impacted chain or have like created changes to the scenes like it's crazy yeah. how yeah, I don't know I like I feel like um it's like an epiphany <laughs> yeah it's like, like however the music moves you right yeah it's a, thing. Um, it's a real thing yeah. So this is, I don't know if this whole like music element is going to stick around for other books that don't have a musical main character. Um, but I am absolutely loving it. I love the like full immersion that this has like, be like become in my life. Yeah. I was going to ask you if you think you'll do it for other books. That makes sense. Uh, definitely yeah. for other books in the series, but it is funny. Like as I, some of the songs I'm like, oh, I feel like maybe this doesn't 
this, this specific song doesn't actually apply to this book, but I'm like, but it kind of applies to like this other book, this other scene, like that I've already written in a past book. And so I don't know if it's like creating all these new neural pathways in my brain and it's just going to like, yeah. if, you know, the writing process is constantly evolving. So, um, yeah, so I am, um, uh, getting worried that this book is going to be way bigger than I thought. Um, and, but why uh, is that worrisome? I think your readers will appreciate that. No, I think my readers will appreciate it. I don't think my timeline will. Um, oh. so oh, yeah. yeah, I have, um, I want to say six, six weeks, six more weeks left, uh, allotted to, um, doing this second draft revision, which, revision sounds lighter than it is. It's basically an entire rewrite because I write it first as a screenplay and then I turn it into a novel. So basically every single word that I originally wrote gets changed. Um, but at least I know exactly what's going to happen in the story. Right. Um, so it's like still very time intensive, um, for the second drafting process for me. Um, and, just to give an example, the first act, which I am just finishing up right now, um, is about 35,000 words. Uh, and I think it was um, like 12,000 words in the first draft. <laughs> so uh, it's More than like doubled, yeah. tripled. <laughs> and um, my complete first draft was like 42,000 words. And uh, so that means we're looking at the longest book I've written by myself. <laughs> if it continues like this. Oh, wow. Yeah. I'm, I'm interested to see how long it is. <laughs> so we'll see. Uh, I do tend to front load my books. Um, so I tend to let, have longer first, first and second acts and a shorter third act. So we'll see. It could tighten up at the end. Um, but I've also added scenes to the end as I've been writing. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I need this scene. <laughs> Makes sense. That's how it works, right? Uh, yeah. So we'll see. <laughs> um, yeah. So that's, that's what I, that's what I, that is all that I'm working on. I have nothing else. There's like my entire planner is just all one color. So that's nice. I'll be interested to see how much I actually get done. The purpose of this retreat is to write. So knowing that, I mean, right now I have 10 chapters. Uh, is it nine or 10? Did I just barely start 10? I don't think I can count that one. <laughs> So like nine chapters written. So it'll be interesting by, you know, to see what I come home with. So that'll be something I'll report on next time because how many chapters is it supposed to be? Um, well, I always skimp on my chapters because I know I always add a bunch. So I think I had like 23 and I always write like 40 chapters. So it's going to double, but, um, but yeah, I mean, I'm assuming it's going to be at least a hundred thousand words. I mean, my books are usually more than that. So, yeah. um, I have no, I haven't looked at the, it doesn't even matter because I'm going to add a bunch of stuff anyways, but, um, I'm, I'm in that stage where I'm writing and I'm like, stop trying to think of this word, Lindsay, and keep going. You're just, you're just like slowing yourself down. So I just yeah. put the, in parentheses, I put something Yeah, <laughs> and then yeah. I keep going. Yeah. yeah. So that's the stage I'm in. So we clearly, or I'll put add more description, you know? Yeah. So I'm just like, who, who, who knows? <laughs> But um, it'll be interesting to see how far I can get done. My goal, which I knew was unrealistic at the beginning of the month, was to at least have it half written by the end of this month. Um, yeah, like I said, I'm barely starting chapter 10, so <laughs> it is what it is. But um, I have to, you know, for audiobook purposes, I have deadlines now, so I have to <laughs> make sure that I stay on track. So that's an incentive, at least, you know. Yeah, is um, that an announcement you can make? Actually, no, but, um, <laughs> to be honest, <laughs> but, uh, so I'm, but I am working with a company now. And so I, I get to make my own deadlines, which are all very doable, but I'm also one of those people. It's like, I seem to work better when I'm really close to the deadline and I can't really do that anymore. Like, I don't feel comfortable doing that anymore, knowing that I owe people a manuscript. So, um, yeah, I just need to stay on course and, um, not keep telling myself I gave myself buffer room. That's not good. <laughs> you can make sure yeah. that I don't remind myself of that. And just I know go, so. it's like you have to lie to yourself about your yeah. calendar, and then yeah, <laughs> yep. I don't know how to lie. Like it's like I know what I put. But... 
yeah, it, it's like a thing though. Like it, I feel, and I was reading this whole article and I, we talked about this before because you know, you're a mom, so you're constantly juggling so many things and you only have so many hours in the day to write. And for people like me who don't have so much like, like human lives that are depending on you to like <laughs> prioritize, um, you have to feed them and stuff. Yeah. It's like, it's easier to keep putting, moving things around all the time. Right. So mm -hmm. it's like my writing time isn't necessarily a priority. It should be, we all know it should be, I know it should be, but it's so easy to move. It's so easy to move. And usually I'm really good with that. But like I said, it usually, I'm really good with that when I'm closer to deadlines. <laughs> so I need to really get better about, you know, what are my commitments during the week so that I can make sure that, um, I work close to them and around them. And I stop moving things around because it's just so it's too easy when you have too much time, you don't appreciate it. And it's weird to say that because I do appreciate how much time I have and how flexible my schedule is. But I think as far as the urgency around it, you, it doesn't click until yeah. it's almost too late. You're like, Oh fuck. <laughs> yeah. like, I got to start writing. You know, it's like, it's one of those laws. And I think it actually has a name. Like, you know, it's not, it's not Murphy's law, but it's like right. that. Um, but it's like the, the, the work you have to do expands into the time that you have allotted for it. It just, it does. Yeah. It's just like, oh yeah, space. <sighs> yeah. And that's the thing is it's like, oh, I have a free week. It's never free. Let's be very <laughs> clear, but I have no <laughs> deadline so I can get so much work done, but then you get all this work done and then you don't write. So, mm -hmm. or you barely write or you're distracted. What takes you three hours to write, you know, five yeah sentences and it's not it's not good <laughs> so anyway oh my um, god that makes me think of um the chapter I was writing today chapter 15 um <laughs> uh, I think like two pages this afternoon um maybe an hour and a half of of writing time I got two pages written because there was so much stuff I had to look up to get it right I was like, ah, uh, cause like my, in my screenplay version, it was just like very, I mean, that's, that's the whole point of the screenplay is like, I can just like blab it out like real quick. Yeah. Um, and there's no description. And so that's this, this draft is like all the description, all the emotions, all the senses, like all the stuff that like takes the brain power. Right. Um, and it really <laughs> does finding the words. Yeah. Like, and like, yeah doing the research on the old kingdom Egypt stuff that doesn't actually have any evidence. And you're like, Oh my God, how do I make this believable based on what we actually know? Because we don't even know anything about this and how do they make their ropes? And like, <laughs> what? Yep. Yeah. So love research, but it's also a major buzzkill when you're trying to get words down on paper. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I um created a an uh let's see here. It's not I would say it's like seventh to eighth dynasty. It's the very beginning of the first intermediate period in ancient Egypt. So right after the old kingdom, I created an inn. I just made it up. What it looks like, oh. how how it's laid out. You know, there you go. Pretty sure I read that they had inns. So let's hope that that's real. <laughs> I'm sure they had something similar. They had to have right. So. That's so, hilarious, you know. though. That's funny. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Yeah. So, um, what are you reading right now? Funny. I just started today. Um, a couple episodes ago, we had Laura Lane, Lauren Lane on the show. And um, I really, you know, I gushed about her book because it was just that super fun uh, Bubbles book. Uh, it was like a that take on, oh. on you know, um little shop on the corner which yes. was I thought that uh, was really fun I really yeah. I really liked I really really liked that book yeah I really did too and so it, funny enough I don't know how it ha I I just downloaded an audiobook from her I'm not listening to it yet but I think it went on sale through chirp or something so I snagged that I'm not listening to it yet but also prime reading currently has one of her books it's hot asset and so I just started it and I'm on, it's super cute and fun and sexy. And I'm on chapter like, I don't know, four or five. So I'm not very far in. Um, but I'm, so anyway, I'm trying to do some light reading because I've been doing a lot of like mythology, history. Like um, I'm also listening to Camille's, uh, she did a book called Jesus Christ Zombie Killer. So it's the post-apocalyptic, but uh, we talked about this last time. Um, but there's a lot of historical elements. So I was really excited to kind of see how she meshed them all together. And it's really cool, but it's also like, 
you know, it's like apocalypse and it's kind of like deep and there's a lot of like history and stuff, which is really is it cool. More, again. I'm just curious. Is it more like zombie apocalypse or is it more like oh. historical fantasy? Probably more like historical fantasy. Um, I just, I, I think I'm in like chapter 12 or 13 or something and you just meet Jesus and he's younger. So he's like still being trained. So he's like, I don't know. It's really interesting. Um, yeah, there's a lot of moving pieces. A lot of people from history and the Bible and stuff are in it. Um, and it all is very cool. I would definitely say there's definitely that that fantastical element to it. Um, so like I said, it's really neat. And she did a lot of like research and, you know, everything, but it's, it uses a completely different part of my brain. And so tonight I decided I had like an hour and a half. Dennis has a class, so he's, you know, busy. And so I was like, you know, I'm going to open and just read like a fun, something fun. And so I had her book from Prime and I was like, I better grab it, obviously, and read it so I can talk about it on the <laughs> podcast because we just had her on. Uh, and so far I'm enjoying it. So I'm good. Good. What about you? I know you don't really read a lot when you're doing revisions. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> I um, am not reading anything that anybody else wrote, uh, <laughs> but uh, I restarted again because I, okay, let me start over. I, so in this book that I'm writing right now, um, it is the third series in this world. And the two main characters from the first two series, Lex and Kat, do have have some point of view chapters in here um uh, because it's like time travel so I needed perspectives from modern time while main characters in past um which isn't really a spoiler it happens in the second chapter um so I was writing Kat's chapter and then I was writing Nick's chapter because Nick has a chapter and Nick is like a fan favorite in my my wor- little corner of the reading world um and and then I was like, God, I really miss Cat and Nick. Cat and Nick. And then I was like, All right, well, I guess I'm just gonna read these books again. So I am re, 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 listening <laughs> to the Cat and Dubois Chronicles, nice. um, which is narrated by Julia Whalen, uh, and she does an amazing job. I uh, started last last Monday, so not this week's Monday, but the one before that, I think. And I am on book five. Um, listening to it and it is uh very fun as always um I am I love Kat I'm super obsessed with Nick I'm so excited that he actually got his own perspective uh with just one chapter in this book um but it's it was really fun to like get inside his head um and uh I <laughs> feel like my gut is telling me that like when I'm done writing this trilogy there it's there's a potential that there might be more um Cat and Nick books. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I guess you'll see. How yeah, you I think I'm just learning that I need to go with go with my muse. Yeah. Oh, Camille would agree with that, I think. I know. I feel like she's taught me so much. <laughs> Good. That's awesome. <laughs> um, yeah. So that is all other than like just little research books that I've been consulting. Um, that's all I have going on reading wise. Yeah. So I feel like there's just not enough time anymore. Yeah. Which isn't, uh, there's always time. Like you'll make time if you're obsessed with the book, you'll make time, but yeah, it's almost like there's like kind of as like a slog getting back into a book, you know, like yes. finding a book, like it's so, easy to pick up a, bo- a book that you've read and you love and you can yes. read that. That's fine. But getting yes. into a new one, sometimes it's hard. Yeah. And I think that that was part of my issue too. Um, so uh, like you said, I don't, I don't usually read much when I am in the like hardcore drafting phase of writing. Um, But also I just read like mm, super quickly and intensively uh, the Fever series Mm -hmm. by Karen Marie Monning. And it's like super, there's lots of books. And um, I feel like I got really into it. Um, And I just needed to like experience reality for a minute (laughs) yeah yeah for sure for sure well I did just pick up a contemporary romance so I totally feel you I'm going from zombie Jesus Christ zombie and uh (laughs) uh the Spartan Greek mythology to 
some rom some romance steamy steamy romance i don't think it's rom-com i haven't looked but um it's still fun so yeah anyway i did just realize though there's no cues on our new screen now that we're doing the for time (laughs) yeah i'm like i literally have no idea how long we've been talking and we should probably move on i have no clue (laughs) i think we've been talking for maybe like 20 25 minutes okay i'm just like i have no clue it's just a blank screen and then our faces (laughs) hey (laughs) um okay so um do you want to give an intro to the the ending series or do you want me to um well we can take turns I guess so just to be clear what we're doing today um there's kind of a lot that's going to be coming up in the ending world um we wrote the series a long time ago um and we got to thinking about how (laughs) We have so many admiring, awesome fans who love the series. And of course, everybody wants us to write more, um, which is an amazing feeling. Um, And I feel like we get a lot of great questions about the series. uh, So it's really fun to talk about, especially because we've been away from it for so long. I feel like it's really fun to kind of go back and revisit, which is kind of what we're going to do today. Um, We're not going to, I mean, we're not going to write any more in the series, in the canon series, um, it's Danny and Zoe's story, story is complete. Yes. They're happy. They've been through hell. Yeah. They are now happily ever after. So um, now it's just really fun to kind of see like what happens next. And um, as far as in the world or with the actual books themselves um, and um, kind of delving back into the beginning and seeing how it all started. And that's mm-hmm. kind of what we want to do today is because it has been so long since we have started working on the series and it was even long. It was, I don't know how long, like at least a year before we even published the first book. So this has been, you know, we're going on probably 11 years ish of working on the series. So, um, it just is really fun for us to be able to kind of go back and talk about it. So, that's what we're going to be doing today, um, which I think some of you are going to be really excited about. And overall, the series itself, if you, if listeners are not familiar with our flagship series, this is the series that both of us, Team Lindsay, Lindsay Fairley, slash Lindsay Sparks, and Lindsay Pogue, uh, wrote together uh, eons ago. Now it really is a team. Yeah, there's lots <laughs> of Lindsays involved. Um <laughs> But this is a series that we both started writing together um, and published together. And this is what got our career started. Our, um, we both obviously had a passion for reading and writing, but we never, we never did anything with it until we met each other and we discovered that, you know, we had these like goals and ideas and it would just be something really fun we can dive into. And we can talk kind of about the process. We've talked about it before, but we can talk a little bit about the process and how it all got started. But the series itself is about two best friends, to put it very simply, um, who are going to college at opposite sides of the United States. There is a pandemic. And let's be very clear. Again, we wrote this like 10 years ago. Way before now. COVID. Yeah, so. way before. So this is not like, you know, we get comments of like, how could you write this series in the middle of the- none of this? Yeah. Book- this series has been out for a very long time. Um, but anyway, so <laughs> they're on the opposite sides of the United States. They're going to college. They have their own lives. They still keep in touch. Obviously, they're best friends, but the pandemic hits. Um, everyone starts getting sick, uh, the world starts collapsing, society starts collapsing, and you have these two best friends who they're bound and determined to get to each other. So the first book in the series after the ending is Danny and Zoe trying to get to each other. And the people they meet along the way, new people, strangers, um, but also people that they know, people that they trust, and some of them even betray them. Anyway, it's mm-hmm. just their kind of adventures trying to get to each other through the whole first book. And then the series goes from there. So um, please feel free to add whatever you'd like, Lindsay. So I'm going to add that this virus that we created and spent a lot of time in libraries researching. Oh, yeah, the big twist. <laughs> <laughs> I completely <laughs> forgot about. Thank God. So what here. makes this book unique, other than the fact that it was written by two chicks named Lindsay? Mm-hmm. Um is that the virus gives people superpowers. Yeah. <laughs> Genetically alters them. Yes. Say. But only the people who, okay, it kills. Okay. I know we did the math on this. It's something like 90% die. Um, yeah. 8% of the survivors or 8%. So 80% of the survivor. Anyway. Okay. 90% of the people who get the virus die. 8% of the people who get the virus go insane. 
and, or maybe it's 9%, I don't know. And then a very teeny tiny percent get superpowers. Yeah. And so the post-apocalyptic world that we got to explore in this four book plus two extra companion books and then (laughs) other series world um, is uh, all, all, all of the people who are still alive for the most part um, are either totally, completely nuts um, or they're like (laughs) X-Men. Yeah. So, and one of the things, and and we said spoilers, so this, listen at your own risk. Um, So the cool thing that I really like about this is that, um, which is different from the Savage North Chronicles, which was really fun to write for a different reason because they had no connection to like where it, ground zero where it all yeah. started right and i did want to add that the savage north chronicles is the series the lp wrote yeah uh that is in the ending world world but it's not connected yeah. really um there's some crossover characters but mostly it's its own thing yeah but the cool and it takes place in alaska let's be clear uh which is very far away from the you know continental united states but so. it is um uh, i would highly recommend that if you love the ending series you should definitely read the savage north chronicles especially because in the last I think in the, especially the final book, but maybe the, is it the last? Oh, there's a couple different books where there's. Well, but especially in the final book, there's a like very major, like. Yeah. There's lots of ending series characters. Yeah. You get to see a lot of like, like a further down the road than you got to see in the ending series of like where our characters are. Talk about spoilers. You get to see a lot of things that readers really want to know at the end of after the ending series. Yeah. Yes. So I forgot about that. I didn't think about that. That's very true. Um, So that is a very fun thing. But um, what the hell was I saying before we started? I don't know. I just wanted to interrupt you and derail your thoughts. So okay. Um, (laughs) No, what I was going to say Oh, what I really liked about the series is it's cool because it's like so twisted as to like how this all happened and Danny and Zoe are in the center of it. So, and they don't even know it. So it's just really, really cool. I really like that twist in this series about, um, because, you know, we were going back, we were trying to figure out like, what are we going to talk about tonight? I mean, there's a gazillion things, but we also haven't visited these books in years. So we're just kind of like, oh, having to refresh ourselves. Right. But the biggest, one of the biggest things that, that came to mind for me is just like how epic it ended up being as far as who knows who. And, you know, Zoe and her brother, Jason, I mean, their parents quite literally are responsible for killing the world, you know, like it's insane. Um, and then it, I don't know, it's just, it's really cool how it all worked out. Even if when we started writing the first book, we may not have known all of these things. I can't remember what we planned and what we didn't. I mean, I think we, I think we were pretty clear on what her parents were involved in some way, but I remember even her dad, like Jason and Zoe's dad, I don't think that we planned on him being alive until like the third book or something he and then it worked out perfectly but like just fun, fun stuff like that how it's just like i really think we evolved. forgot that they had a dad like, i think we did, they were like he wait, supposedly wait, died in the first dad? or what about their yeah. dad oh for sure yeah <laughs> um but anyway it's just so cool and when you really start to think about how many layers there is to the story i thought that was really really cool so that's what makes it a little bit special too is it's not just like it's not this you know people who are these people who are affected by the world you know this some big you know apocalyptic shift or change it's they are quite literally responsible for it and they don't even know it so anyway it's just really interesting so yeah I like that but anyway so yeah we um okay so they have abilities we tried to make them semi-realistic as far as like they're not like they can't just like fly around and like yeah you know we tried to make we tried to ground them in some sort of like cohesive like pseudoscience (laughs) yeah I mean obviously it's very science fiction but it's also (laughs) you know it's not like crazy um but anyway uh okay so what do which question do you want to kind of start with well I figured why don't we do the origin story first okay go ahead Um, you can start that one yeah okay so um the this is um 
it's just a, it's just it's just a fun story um how this series came to be um, slash we apologize because we have talked about this but that was probably. like 50 episodes ago so yeah so but. even though this is only episode 44 but yeah okay it's okay well now it's episode now it's 60 episodes ago so now we're just going back <laughs> <further>. <laughs> um uh yeah so uh lp and i met uh working at a bookstore um in napa and we i feel like we eh, hit it off right away um and we discovered that we liked similar books um specifically like in the paranormal romance mm -hmm. area um i feel like we bonded over discovery of witches yep, I was and, gonna say that yeah. one, yeah. and true blood <laughs> yeah oh um, those were the days yeah we're, are we uh, dating ourselves i think we're dating ourselves <laughs> <laughs> um eric northman never goes out of date or like okay. out of fashion i believe in my opinion he's he's still an uh, inspiration for characters for me um anyway uh yeah so we went to part of our job or as part of our job we went to a book conference in san francisco it was in san francisco oakland. right oh oakland yeah. um <clears throat> And uh, we met Tahira Mafi. Mm -hmm. uh, she's super nice. She's yeah. She would. I think that that so meeting Tahira Mafi. I feel like was the spark that like it was like or it was like the key that opened unlocked the door that like right. made us realize it and was then, possible for a person like a real physical person that you can meet and talk to and like yeah. feel awkward with. And who feels awkward with you to like write a book? It's uh, the people who write books are real people. What? Yeah, and they're really awkward like we are. So yeah. it's really cool that we're all nerds together. Yeah. But I want to be really clear because a lot of people might not know who she is. She's the one who wrote the Shatter Me series, yes. the dystopian best-selling um, Shatter Me series. It's like yeah. apparently there's a new book coming out. So there's like 17 books now. That's an exaggeration, oh. but well, I've still only read the trilogy, but I totally love it. They're yeah. great audiobooks. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, uh, yeah, Tara Moffey, She wrote the Shatter Me series. Okay, moving on. Um, yeah, so we, uh, went to that book conference, um, got, like, huge bags full of advanced reader copies. Those were the days, right? <laughs> yep. <laughs> and I should probably say, too, that that was when, um, we had taken our hardcovers of Shatter Me, and she defaced the crap out of them, and so that's important for when we meet her again later on. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but anyway. Um, so on the car ride home, I think it just, like, both of us started realizing that it, it just meeting her made us think like, oh my gosh, she's like a real person. That's so cool. And like, we both wanted to write, we had like stories in our heads and we'd tried writing before and never went anywhere. And it was like, well, maybe we, maybe we are capable of writing a book too. Um, and then I think we were starting, or we were talking about um, story ideas that we had and it just evolved into um, this idea for this post-apocalyptic world of about two friends, um, mm -hmm. and that that were a virus gave people superpowers. Um, and I think it was that afternoon we went into your backyard yeah. and started brainstorming. <laughs> yeah, we did. And at that point, though, it was only gonna be a blogs, right? It was just blog yeah. posts. Uh, it was there was no there was no decision or talk about writing a book or a series or being authors. That it was, was just not, like we could write we a could story. write, yeah. We can, yeah, we can make awesome shit. We up could that's create what we wanted to do. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, we, I think in our original idea, uh, it was just all going to be through email. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that it was just going to be Danny and Zoe writing to each other through email. Um, so that doesn't really work in a post-apocalyptic <laughs> world, just FYI. <laughs> but Alarm. boy, did we dig in our heels about that. I know. <laughs> um, yeah. And, uh, I guess, uh, to me, that's, that's like where it all started. And I do yeah. very vividly remember. So we're like, we're sitting there with sunny in your backyard, there's your pool. Um, and I remember us talking about the, like the final battle and like that it was like rain. I don't remember if it actually ended up being rainy in the final battle, but I remember us being like talking yeah, we were about talking it, like about, pouring yeah. and they're like these epic powers and like, just this really rainy dark oh, oh that was cool yeah yeah 
those are the good old I days think when Camille would say that that was um that was a muse yeah that was definitely that was free flowing right there yeah um yeah and it was really, and I remember us coming up with characters uh and I I remember trying to think of like Zoe's character and deciding she had a brother and I don't remember if you named him or I named him or whatever but I remember thinking yeah she's gonna have a brother and then it's funny I remember later on thinking man she was it's funny like I remember thinking of this character but because it was more of a Danny Camp character Jason was that I never really wrote him that much and he he became your character and I was like how interesting is that like Mm -hmm. I was like I wanted to have a brother and then all of a sudden this whole storyline transformed (laughs) yeah you know like but isn't that like Mm -hmm. the coolest thing so yeah Jason is yeah he like he made Danny's entire arc her entire everything you know it was perfect yeah so I mean I think that that this is one thing that makes this series really special and unique is the fact that it is it is very much a post-apocalyptic survival story but it Mm -hmm. is also in terms of like the whole series arc for these two main characters a romance not Mm -hmm. like with each other um although people get (laughs) confused about that all the time I'm like it's about two best friends and it's a post-apocalyptic world and they're trying to find them their way to each other and it's a romance and they're like wait are they in love with each other no it's okay I'm like oh my partner and my partner's name is Lindsay like your partner I'm like my business partner <laughs> yeah oh well <laughs> uh, I mean whatever but I'm just like mm. choose your um, words Lindsay choose your words correctly <laughs> um yeah yeah so yeah very cool. I, I is really awesome. Um, so I guess we started off the blog. It didn't really work. We ended up writing a manuscript, but clearly we found out the other day, we went back many times between point of views. Um, we did, uh, we extended on the, we wanted more narrative. We wanted to be able to get behind the scenes of just the emails. Obviously we had to, because at some point the emails would be gone anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we did third person. Yeah. Writing. So we had the emails and then third person. We revised it again and did first person. Who knows how? We really don't yeah. even know. It was so long ago. We don't remember. But it, it, when I say we were working on this project for at least a year before it came out, that is not an exaggeration. It was probably much longer than that um, because we didn't even know we were writing a book at first. And yeah. then we didn't know we were writing a series. And then all of a sudden we were writing a novel and then we were writing more books after that. And then you start, you know, like just you have to get serious about it. And then you start again, the revisions and changing the point of view and what works the best. And then you realize you have far too many text messages and emails and you have to take them out because they would not pop like realistically have email for half the book. So, uh, yeah, it's just, it's all a learning experience. And now we did that together, which is the cool thing about it, I think, because I don't know. I mean, it's hard to say what would have happened, but, um, I mean, I don't know if we would be authors if we hadn't done that together, you know, like. Yeah, no. So, yeah, it's just interesting. So it's a bit, this is a bittersweet series for us because we're like, oh, it's our first series. It's kind of horrible. But then we're kind of <laughs> like, oh, but if we didn't write it, we wouldn't be here. So yeah. we love it. And we obviously they're near and dear to our heart, our characters. We yeah. love them. We spent many years with them, Um, which I think is why it's okay for us to feel like we want to let them go and. Yeah, they are what they are because we spent a lot of time with them and we, we did spend a lot of time with them gave them all their happily ever after so yeah um so uh, uh one of our things that we wanted to talk about um based on what you just said um be- it being our first series and in some ways kind of horrible <laughs> <laughs> i already know what question this is yeah <laughs> um if you could go back and change one thing what I mean, I feel like I have several things that I'm going to say, even though we said we were just going to say one thing. Oh, well, I have a couple What is things, the one thing I, that I you would I only put one thing, but I'm, I can obviously think of many too. <laughs> um, so the one that I allowed myself to have, because um, I kind of knew what some of yours was, were going to be, so I didn't, I stayed away, um, is the one thing I re- I re- kind, that I always kind of think back on is, so the entire book one, you know, there was this push and pull between Zoe 
and Jake, and there was this whole prophecy, the girl with the, you know, pretty, Mm -hmm. you know, the amazing eyes, whatever. I don't even remember what it was. Teal. The girl with the teal eyes and the, you know, you're going to kill her, but you're going to save her and all this stuff. And I really loved all of that. And I thought it was really epic and really cool. And I remember feeling by the end of the book, I was like, this is such slow burn romance. I feel like readers are going to be disappointed that nothing happens. And so at the very end of the book, it doesn't really happen until after Zoe uh, and Danny meet up and they're at the ranch. But then it allude like things happen between like there's this romance, like physical romance between Jake and Zoe that I didn't originally write or want to happen, but I felt kind of pressured to do it. And looking back, something that I kind of regret is not going with my gut, which is just leave it a slow burn. Like just because, just because. Danny and Jason got together doesn't mean that Zoe and Jake had to. And that mm-hmm. was something that was a big learning curve for me because from that was like, I don't know, some of the, like, sometimes I give the advice of like, if you have someone asked me, like, if you could tell, uh, you know, an aspiring author, give them one piece of advice, what would it be? And my thing is always go with your gut because more often than not, I regret not going with my gut. And that was, that's one of those things that comes to mind for me. It's like, I wish I would have done that because that's what felt more genuine and real. Mm -hmm. And so, um, and I know it's not like a big thing, like probably nobody cares, but for me as an author, as a writer, as my characters and my story, like that's what I really wanted was for it to be like the slow burn and like carry it into book two. Mm -hmm. But I, I like felt like I rushed them together. They already had this epic thing going. Like I didn't need that to happen, you know? So that was one of the things that really stuck with me. Um, But I, like I said, I know there are other things that we've talked about. So I'll let you discuss those specifically. (laughs) Yeah, I have. I mean, my number one thing is like very basic and simple. And I know you already know what it is. Yeah, Um, which is, but everyone else needs to know too, right? Yeah, but it, it, (laughs) I feel like it really it like really harms the story because it confuses people. And why the F did we have so many people, so many men, men, not even men, male characters. One of them is a dog (laughs) (laughs) whose names begin not only, not only with J, but with J A. What? (laughs) How did we not notice this? And they're all like one syllable too, like except for I mean Jason. Okay, no, I guess so. But <laughs> okay, so we have Jason, who is Zoe's brother and Danny's love interest. Then we have Jake, who is Zoe's love interest, and then we have Jack, <laughs> who's the dog, <laughs> who is Danny's dog and is a big character because Danny yeah, can he's talk in it to a him lot, yeah. because she's telepathic with animals. So he's basically like another person. Yeah, well, he's in almost all of her chapters, yeah, or yeah. all of them. Yeah. So is Zoe making out with Jake or is she making out with Jack? If you're reading really fast, you might not be sure. And you know, the silly thing is, is I'm pretty sure there's even more of them than that. Like there's Clara and, wait, was it Clara and Callie? No, Clara and- Oh, there's Camille. Cece. Camille, and Cece. Camille. And Clara. Um, are there other C's? What about- Who's the one that died? Callie. Cal- no, what? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Danny's roommate. <sighs> so there, yeah. There's yeah. a lot. So clearly we learned our lesson, people. <laughs> yeah. So um, be, uh, learn from us and be more careful about picking your ca- <laughs> the first letters of your character's names. Yeah. Ugh. Rough um, business, yeah. folks. Rough business. Ah, I just like, I don't know what I, I don't know what. I don't know why, how, how did we not notice this? Yeah, I know. Well, I guess that kind of goes with like, well, one, we were lost in our own world and we were inexperienced and I don't know. I don't know, but I mean, I, there's probably a hundred reasons, but none of them are good. Hmm. (laughs) Um, All right. What else you got? Oh, lots. Uh, (laughs) No, um, I feel like the two other major things, well, no, there's three, there's three other things that I would want to change. Like if we were to go back and do a full series revision, which we are not going to do, (laughs) Let me just be really clear. <laughs> not, I'm not saying to you. I mean, to like yeah, anybody right, right. who's like, yeah. Um, <clears throat> okay. I would take out the thoughts. The, uh, in, the, in the physical version, there's italicized thoughts. And I think we stopped like later in the series as we both kind of like matured as writers. Um, but I would take out the thoughts 
Um, yeah, I don't, I, I, I did the exact same thing in Echo in Time. Um, there's all these thoughts <laughs> and I'm just like, why did I do that? That's so funny. I didn't notice, but I also haven't read it in so long. I'm scared to, for that very reason. I'm like, yeah. oh, I don't want to yeah. cringe the whole time. Um, <clears throat> the other things, the two other things, two other big things. And I feel like I'm going to forget one now. Um, all the beautiful people. <laughs> Oh yeah, that's probably true as well. <laughs> um, I, you know, it, it's like a prerequisite to be a survivor in the series. You have to be like model gorgeous. <laughs> but I think to our credit, we did diversify a lot. Like, yeah, I think that was something. Well, and not to mention, let's be really clear too. We were writing rom apocalyptic romance yes. that wasn't even a thing. So obviously it needed to be appeal like to romance readers and yes. like not authors, yeah. but readers like us. Yeah. So that's another reason why probably everybody was gorgeous. They were but totally gorgeous. Jason is super gorgeous. Jake is so gorgeous. I mean, like gorgeous. <laughs> but I just think that like, I mean, I, I feel like we've gotten criticism that everybody's really stock character and white and whatever but I don't I think if you really read the context it's very clear that that's not true so yeah um and that's I just wanted to say this too because I don't readers probably aren't aware of this or listeners or both I guess they're one and the same but we have people who love the series and we have people that hate the series there is no oh my gosh I know you it's so divisive it you hate it. there is nobody in between so yeah. If you look at the like little review layout on Goodreads and Amazon, it's like really, it's like the top part is high and the bottom part is high. And then it's, it's like a little curve. <laughs> yeah, it's it's crazy. So I know a lot of our, or not a lot, but I've, I, I mean, it's been years since I've read any of our negative reviews or positive oh, yeah. reviews, which makes me sad actually. But um, yeah, I haven't looked at any of the reviews in a while, but I remember when they were first coming in, it was like, everybody was talking about how like, there's no diversification. And I was just like, how is that true? We have Kai, we have Harper. Um, oh, I'm yeah. sure there I'm sure there are other people, but those are two main Sanchez. characters. Oh yeah, Sanchez. So I'm like, who is one of my favorite characters ever. Yeah. Harper's one of my favorite characters. Like, so I'm just like, th there's- I think it's, I, I think know. a lot of that criticism comes from, and I think it's totally valid, the fact that the four main characters- Maybe. Are white. This is a hard topic for me based on my Earth and Ember experience. <laughs> so I'm like, oh. I'm so sorry. Yeah, no, 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 no. I mean, it's but we totally did. I, I feel like it's just like a really uncomfortable thing to talk about. <laughs> and I like don't want to really put my foot in my mouth. Um. No, I know it's hard. It is really hard because we're in the, like, well, let's just be really honest. Like we're in this boat where it's like, we want to write diversity, but you also get criticized for trying to quote unquote, write somebody that you aren't. And yeah. that's the cold hearted fact. Yeah. So it's, it, it's a, I'm not saying that was in our minds when we did this, um, no. but I'm just saying in general, that's a thing. And that's something the authors I have personally had issues with is trying to write diversity and getting pushback from people because I am not that ethnicity. I'm not that from that culture. I don't have those beliefs. How could I be writing about them? And it's like, well, do you want other people to learn and read and explore and ask questions or don't you? And it's just really hard. So yeah, diversity is kind of a, it's a, it's definitely a topic. So yeah, I feel like I have been like slowly spreading my wings in terms of my main characters and like branching them out. Yeah. Um, I, in so like in my echo series, there's a, you know, the, these people are descended from Egyptian gods. So there's a lot of, um, Egyptian, Beautiful people. <laughs> Egyptian people in it. Uh, so <clears throat> I definitely, I, I feel like this in a little, in a way this relates to my final change that I would want to make. Um, but I don't know. I feel like it, this I don't know how to say this. Like I make a conscious effort now to tackle um, many aspects of, a, of diversity in, in my books, but specifically how I treat women um, and female characters, I really um, am really conscious of now. And um, I, so like, I think of, I always kind of try to hold this in my mind where 
uh, if I'm automatically going to make a character male, um, I'm trying to think of an example. Uh, I think in the Atlantis legacy, I had a character who was just like a, a, like a stock bodyguard kind of person, not, not, a, not a big character. Um, and I automatically made them male. And I was like, no, I'm flipping it around. I'm making it, making them female. Um, and, uh, making like female jealousy and stuff like that. I try to try to like really, I feel like pop you culture. You want to exemplify yeah. stigma and stuff. Yeah. I yeah. Get it. Like I get it. women build each other up. We're not always like trying to tear each other down, even if it, if it happens a lot in pop culture. Um, and so that women interaction thing is something that I, is the last thing that I would want to change. I feel like in my at least in my, so I wrote Danny and in Danny's part, there's a lot of contentious female relationships. Oh yeah. Um, like Cece, her and Cece yeah. specifically. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I really, I would go back if I could, I would change a lot of the CC elements. Um, I, I really, it, it doesn't sit well with me the way that I wrote that. So interesting. Yeah. I mean, I guess that's a good point, but I, I never would have thought about that unless you brought it up. Yeah. Um, I think it's because I think about it and I'm so conscious of it in my writing now in, in not making that like women are competing for the man kind of thing, um, that it really just like sticks out to me in an unsettling way from early writing kind of stuff. Oh, I, it shows up in Echo and Time too. It's the same thing. Apparently I was having like an issue with it. So. No, that's really interesting. I've never actually thought about how I write women, um, at least not consciously anyway, not mm. purposefully, like, you know, but yeah. I have thought about, you know, obviously like I think about the South North Chronicles and how much, you know, native culture that I included in that and really wanted to not just, I want to think about the land. Like for me, it's all about the land. It's about mm -hmm. the people. It's about like, I don't know the things I am so curious about and the, I guess it's diversity just by like default, but it's more just like these things that I don't know about that I just want to learn about. Yeah. And for me, I never thought about the female aspect of it, but now that you bring it up, like, and again, I don't think about that when I'm writing, but I, that's a really good thing to keep in mind too. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I, I'm trying to, like, I don't want to waste a bunch of time thinking yeah. about the last 20 books that we've written and <laughs> what we've done and haven't done or whatever. But I'm just saying like, that's something that I'm not moving forward. I will probably yeah. think about that too, because yeah. I, I wasn't thinking about that. I'm so worried about like, I really want to write about X, Y, and Z, but I really don't want to piss people off, but I really want to write about it. So, but so now it's like, yeah, thanks Lindsay. Now I have one more thing. I <laughs> yeah, no, it's actually, it becomes second nature though. So like I consider, yeah. I call it in my head, um, I call it quiet feminism. Um, so it's, I, I feel like I try to take, I, like, I try to put it into all of my stories, just like trying to twist the gender norms, like from what yeah. you would expect. So it's like the head of the UN, you know, UN Security Council, instead of like automatically making it a man, I made it a woman. I just like mm -hmm. any time where I feel, mm -hmm. I can feel mm -hmm. myself automatically putting some, a person of power or villain or just anything where I'm automatically like, oh, that's a man. I'm like, no, I'm going to make that a woman, you know? Yeah. It's funny. Now that you say that, I have realized when I do make women villains, I'm like, oh, am I perpetuating that cycle that women are like crazy bitches? Like, yeah, <laughs> I have thought about that. And I'm like, yeah. But then it's like the, it's the same trap as if it's a man. I, anyway. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, we can go on and on about that. Yeah. So those are, those are my, all my big things. I feel like unburdened now. Good. It's out in the world. It's not on your shoulders yeah. and your heart anymore. And Good. I would like to reiterate, we are not going to do a big revision. <laughs> so if no, we did, not. that's what I would do, but we're not going to. Okay. All right. All right. Which question <laughs> you want to do next? Um, Okay. Um, let's do, let's, um, end with the big announcement okay. and let's do favorite book. Let's do favorite book. Which is your favorite book in the series? Um, okay. So for me, I actually took some time to think about this today because honestly, like I was thinking about how difficult this question is to 
answer. Like if I really, if I think too hard about it, because it's been so long since I've worked on these books that I'm like, I know I'm missing really cool things, you know, Mm -hmm. in each book, but I really was torn between into the, um, into the fire because so many things happen in that. Like there's so many like awesome, it's like the shortest book, but the most, it's like the most action packed and the most like drama filled and the Mm -hmm. most secrets are revealed. Mm -hmm. Uh, However, I ended up going with uh, breaking or uh, before the dawn, <laughs> breaking dawn. We didn't write right, that book, just so everybody knows. <laughs> I do um, remember walking trying to together, figure out name. trying nope. to figure out what we were going to call that, and we we're like before the dawn. But is that too close to breaking dawn? And like, what are we yeah. going to do? Yeah, yeah. But I think I'm going to go with that one. Um, I I I chose that one for a few reasons. Um, one because. I think we were getting more confident, or at least I felt like I was getting more confident in my writing. I really knew my characters really well, and I was able to kind of stretch my legs a little bit. Um, I felt like my characters were more confident and stronger, which was really fun to write. They didn't have to be these meek, like, trying to survive anymore. Like, they were in this world. They were surviving, but then they had all the shit hit them, like, with Jason going missing and at the their mother showing up and their dad had just showed up at the very end of the last book and so like there's all this crazy stuff that's happening they find out you know zoe and jason find out they have a brother Mm. and so there's just there's so many things that happen in it and there's so everything comes to the close which i really was really kind of epic um I really like that we got to see Anna and Harrison and that whole dynamic and the final showdown, um, which every time I drive through Petaluma, through the avenue of, I don't know what it's actually called. I call it the avenue of the eucalyptus, but anyways, I think about that scene. Yeah. Um, but um, I really, really liked that Zoe was able to miss Jason because he was gone and their entire lives, they were at odds with each other. Like yeah. they never really understood each other. But then he goes missing and she's like, she had just gotten him back and that she just felt like she had a brother and they were just had like a semblance of actual family together and they loved, like they openly admitted like their issues that he, you know, had talked to her in previous book about like why he was so distant. And I don't know, it's like she had just gotten her older brother and then he was taken. So I really liked that she was able to kind of miss him for a little while and really know what she was missing and what, you know, like feel his loss yeah um spoiler he comes back (laughs) he didn't die or anything yeah (laughs) but even though danny thinks he did yeah um but so i really liked that part of it and then um one of the favorite scene my favorite scenes in that entire series that i wrote was when she gets kidnapped and she's with carl and randall and oh yeah that was a great part that was so fun to write and so different than anything that i'd written in that entire series i absolutely loved it so yeah there are a few reasons obviously why i picked that book but that's the both the, the big final finale one and obviously everyone gets their halfway ever after that's awesome but, well you know. not everyone well i mean yeah, some people die. <laughs> People, people die <laughs> but in general it was um it just it had like all the epic stuff in it that I really enjoyed writing I think it that's the one I think that gave me all the feels so yeah it does have a lot of feels what about you, did you um I I just really loved Into the Fire that was yeah like I said I was torn yeah. and I think Into the Fire is a really strong book I'm really proud of it that we I feel like there's so much growth um, as authors between After the Ending and Into the Fire. Um, Yeah, I just like, I feel like we learned so much. Um, We really tightened it up. Uh, We got to explore the colony, which, God, that was so much fun to build Um, and just figure out, figuring out Harrodson and like, uh, just like really digging into the like the background and Gabe. I love Gabe. I really do. Um Gabe is one of my like uh oh what's the right term? Um he's my unfinished business. <laughs> um if I not if when when I get back into the world um I feel like addressing what happens to him after this series is one of my main priorities. I really 
want him to have, um, a happy ending and, you know, yeah. Um, yeah, but yeah, into the fire was, it was just like, it was so fun to see the other side because yeah, and that it was really different than all the other books, because even though in the first book, they were both separated, there was no, like, yeah, they were all in danger the whole time, but there was no immediate danger. Like in the second book, Danny is with the man behind everything. Like she is trapped in the colony. Right. And so it was really interesting because that book in a way is different than all the others, because it's completely divided. Like you have, you finally have Zoe with her brother who can barely stand each other. So you have that whole thing going on them trying to find Danny (laughs) her and Jake are just starting to get everything figured out. They meet all these new people. They're trying to survive. They're just trying to get to Danny, make sure she's alive, right? And then you have this whole other story line going on at the same time with Danny and the colony, which that doesn't really have, I mean, like I said, it's kind of similar to book one, but it's different. It's like more eminent or something. It's just yeah. very different. And um, and also there's a ghost town, which is yeah. super fun. <laughs> no, that was super fun to write. Oh my God, I loved that. <laughs> and, and the research really- for that was awesome. <laughs> Yeah, that was super awesome. There's a really sexy scene that happens there. There is a really sexy scene. I forget that's where Becca comes back into Jake's sister. And so that was really interesting. uh, I think a ton of huge things happen in that book. Um, And just unveiling this. Or like revealing all uh, Dr. Wesley, Anna, like revealing so many of her secrets was so fun. Yep. And so that kind of, so just since we're talking about this book, um, we were talking about some impressions, like scenes, big scenes that left impressions on me. And the first one that came to mind for me is Zoe and Jason opening that box. Yeah. God, that that box, that stupid box, (laughs) stupid fucking box that we came up with on a whim in the first book. Oh, let's add like a cool secret box. And then we had to figure out what the hell was in it in the second book. Oh my God. (laughs) But it was so amazing. And I loved writing all of that just because again, that was, I'm pretty sure that was really my first chapter writing with Zoe and Jason. And again, it's so strange because Zoe is his sister and yet they didn't really have any real scenes together until then. So it was like this really epic scene in a lot of ways because it was me getting to write both of them together for the first time, like really together, like just them in this really intense moment, all these secrets being revealed that totally changes everything for all of them. And um, yeah, I don't know. It, so anyways, that was one of the scenes that like really stuck out to me. Um, because again, that book was, that book was probably my, you know, second favorite. So yeah. Anyway. Um, so then, yeah, so I guess we're moving into, uh, favorite scenes. Um, yeah, sorry. <laughs> no, no worries. Um, so I did, I did, I do have one. So I was originally going to do two after the ending scenes because we were not Confused. clear when we decided what <laughs> yeah. we were going to do. <laughs> um, so I have one after the ending scene and then I have another scene. Well, it's more like a storyline, but from another book. Um, so my, after the ending scene is, um, I just love this scene. Um, it is chapter 40 of after the ending. It's when Danny and Jason first kiss, um, as in present day, um, or, you know, like in the book act in the active storyline. Uh, and, um, yeah, it just, they're, they're in her, childhood bedroom it's like this really sweet I remember that yeah it's like this really fun juxtaposition so it's like her innocence Mm -hmm. from her childhood um smashed up against her like lifelong crush on Jason and the fact that they're adults and they're both super interested in each other and there's all this sexual tension and it's like and the box (laughs) the box makes it a first appearance stupid yeah. box that box does show up in that that's that's a pretty long chapter um i i kind of love everything about that chapter it also that chapter also has a scene when they go to obviously where they find the box when they go to um jason and zoe's house and he gives her the little um cat, or she picks the little, yeah. the little um carved cat um that he made um 
yeah, I just, I love that little, do you get yeah. to see who they, I mean, I feel like you can learn so much about somebody based on the things that are in their physical spaces. Um, and so you get to learn about the things that made these people who they were growing up based on what's in their childhood bedrooms. Right. So I just, I love that, but they're, I love their like sexual tension coming to a little bit of a fruition, um, in her childhood bedroom. It just is really sweet. So I really love yeah. that scene. Yeah. I was just thinking, um, that whole series in general, it was really cool in that it all, I mean, obviously Zoe starts on the East coast, but there's so much of that story that takes place here where I live. So that was super fun to like, you lived here at the time too. Mm -hmm. So that was super fun to be able to write that kind of stuff. Um, I think maybe because I've been writing in places lately, you know, the Forgotten Lands is, other than Tide and Tempest, everything else is, you know, the desert. I've never lived in the desert and I've had to do a lot of research and, yeah. uh, or, you know, Savage North Chronicles and Canada and Alaska and <laughs> wild lands and stuff. And I've had to do so much research and figure out how to be connected to something that I've never been to. Whereas like, I felt super connected to the locations and the settings and stuff. I was just thinking about um, Danny and Jason's wedding and on, you know, how they all camped up near the yeah. Jacob Bay and just all that stuff that is just mm -hmm. like, it's like home, you know? So I yeah. really liked that too. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then the other thing that came to mind for me was also kind of like a, it wasn't necessarily a specific scene. It was more of an arc that I, that really, uh, resonates with me or really stands out to me still is throughout, um, uh, out of the ashes, the whole, uh, Jake and Zoe arc of Zoe losing her memory. Mm -hmm. I, I was kind of, that's always been kind of on the forefront of my mind. And today I went back and I was looking at it and, I just remember sitting down to write that and thinking like how excited I was that I got to do a Zoe, write a Zoe for the, that's completely different from the last two books. And yeah. I got to explore parts of them that they have been too reserved or guarded or X, Y, and Z to talk about. And I got to do that because Zoe wouldn't know any better, you know? Yeah. And so I don't know, I was just thinking about how much I really enjoyed sitting down to write those and even just writing like Zoe with Danny and not having these recollections of the box that was mm -hmm. such a big deal, you know, just things like that. And it's just like, I remember thinking how fun that was and getting to know Sarah a completely different way. Mm -hmm. um, but anyway, yeah, that was a whole other arc that I just really enjoyed writing. And it, again, it wasn't an actual scene, one specific scene, but it was something that's really stuck with me that, um. I made me want to go back and start flipping through the pages of out of the ashes and like kind of revisiting. I was even thinking today, I was like, oh, I really want to reread these books, but I really am scared. I don't want to reread these books. I know. I was just thinking <laughs> yeah. that. Like just skip after the ending. Start with Into the Fire. Yeah, right. That's kind of what I was thinking. We're on the same page. All right. I'll keep you posted. <laughs> um not because we don't love the story of after the ending. So for people who do love that story, it's just, oh, yeah. it's really painful. <laughs> like when you feel like you have, I mean, any, anything that you, anything that anybody creates, like you are your worst critic, I think. Right. Um, but there's also a lot to criticize. Uh, <laughs> but it's like your, your earliest work, you're always going to be like, ugh. Uh, and, uh, that's how we feel. <laughs> and I think, I mean, that's totally true. Um, but I also think it says something that we need to keep in mind too. And I was thinking about this today is that we can sit there and we can be our own worst critics and we can all oh, cringe when we think about reading that book or whatever, but people love it. And that's yeah. a lot, that says a lot about us and like our writing and yeah, maybe it's not the best writing. It definitely could be improved, but we still captured something that people love. And that's something that we should be really proud about. We yeah. have, we have characters that they don't actually care if they're written well, they love them that much. Yes. So, and I think, I think that that's really is cool. the number one reason why we would not do a revised version because I don't know. It's like that thing when you like, it's that thing when you, um, it's, when you create a book and you put it out in the world, it was like, before you put it out into the world, it was your book. You put it out into the world and all of a sudden it's like, this story belongs to everybody because it lives in everybody's minds and they 
know these characters, these characters are their friends. And if we revised that story and released a new version, we yeah. would be taking, it's like, we would be trying to take that away from people and yeah. like trying to say like, well, the stuff that you, these people that you love and, um, like, that's not actually how it happened, you know, but it is, that's how it happened. It's done. That's like, how it's it written. Happened that yeah. That's, that's how it is. Yeah. And I, and I think it's just really important. We're not, we are always going to find, like, there's still thing. I absolutely love the Forgotten Lands and it's my pride and like my pride and joy. I love the Savage North Chronicles too. I love all of them, but there is plenty that I would change if I could as well. So it's not like it's just the series, but, oh, because, no, no, no. It's our, but because it's our first series, it's yeah. so easy to be judgmental of it because it's like, oh, we've grown so much in 10 years, you know? Yes. So. Yes. I mean, there's tons of stuff I would change in the Echo Trilogy. Um, I mean, not so much in the Cat Debaugh Chronicles because I just am obsessed with that series. I don't know what my problem, I'm like so narcissistic with that series. I don't know what the deal is. Um, <laughs> but um, yeah, it's it's just the early, the farther, I think the far, more time passes, the more you change. And Yeah, of course. You know. Um, okay, so my other, my second thing, my second, it's not a specific scene, it's more of a storyline. Um, but as we were talking more about these books, um, I started to think about it. So like the story, the after the ending is all about Danny and Zoe reuniting. Like that is the main conflict. Um, these two best friends, they, there is no romantic love between them, but they are, they are sisters. Like mm -hmm. they, they're, Num the, only, the number one thing that they are thinking of when the world is ending is that they need to get together because mm -hmm. they don't want to live in a world where they're never going to see each other again. Um, and I, so my, the storyline that I really love um, is in Before the Dawn. Um, and it is after Danny believes that Jason is dead. He's not. Um <laughs> It, she learns that she's pregnant. Zoe is the one who makes her realize this. And I think that she, in, in Danny's heart, Jason is dead, but she still has Zoe and her love and friendship and sisterhood with Zoe kind of like pulls her out of her depression mm -hmm. and like makes her whole again or like heals her heart as much Enough, as it can yeah, the worst yeah. Can see and so we got her. to really see the strength of their their bond mm -hmm. um and I think that storyline I really really love and I feel like yeah that's true I can't remember if it was intentional or not if we were like okay so the first book it was like about their friendship and like we need to pull it full circle Let's but I feel clear, like we're it, not that organized I know <laughs> but not. I feel like it did come full circle with that yeah, storyline um, so yeah, I just think it, I think it worked out really well. Yeah, for sure. I remember what is the, uh, one of the final scenes with them is they're underneath that metal tree, right? Yeah. And they're yeah. talking and they're, yeah, that was really nice. She's still pregnant in that scene, right? Danny? Yes. She, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Just checking because in the other series, Savage North Chronicles, there's a little one running around. So I get confused. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I, um, I, re I remember us, I don't know, I remember writing, us writing that final scene and that was like, it felt perfectly rounded and yes. good. And I think we purposely, I've like, this is, uh, my memory is very bad. Um, lots of holes. Uh, but I feel, I feel like I remember, uh, that we were like purposely thinking of like, how many things can we pull back in and go full circle and like, just like really, I know we were really conscious about, um, t like tying up loose ends and mm -hmm. like we talked to bait or, um, our readers, um, and beta readers, uh, about like, what are the things that you really want to have answered? Um, so I feel like, I feel like that, I think we did yeah. a pretty good job in that book. Yeah, I know we did. I, I'm still surprised that we did so good with all the freaking 
twists and turns and curveballs. I'm like, damn, we brought that story together. We did a good job. I don't know how we did that. Yeah. It wasn't planned, but it all worked out. Yeah. Um, and one of the things that I forgot to mention earlier, the reason why I wanted to bring up um, Tara Moffey, Tahara Moffey, uh defacing our books is because when we give away those original, those hardcovers, those special edition hardcovers that you can't get anymore, and we deface them and for giveaway winners, I got, we got that idea from her because yeah. she, we had met her twice. So the first time we brought the, our book and she defaced it and she wrote amazing things on it. And then this the was second, before she was like a New York times bestselling, blah, yeah. blah, 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 blah. And this was before we published. So then when we met her the second time, we went to another book conference. She was there. We met her. We brought our same books, or at least I thought yeah. I had brought my same. Yeah, I did. And we were already, we had published the first book and we were like, Hey, remember us? And we actually did it. We're team Lindsay. We published a book and she like did double signage and she yeah. it all over the cover. And she's like, yay, you guys are awesome. And she like wrote all over it. And that's where we got the idea to deface the hardcovers to send yeah. to you guys when you, um, we do the tree and whatever, just yeah. because that's what we can draw. We're not super talented, but, um, <laughs> like, not like yeah, Zoe. Just, yeah. Yeah. Why did I have to create such, <laughs> um, but anyway, yeah. So, um, but that's all came from meeting her multiple times and then her just being super excited for us and, um, her, she doesn't even know who we are anymore, I'm I sure. know. <laughs> but it's the cool thing is, is like, that's how she changed us. And I just have to say, like, I don't even know why I'm bringing this up, I guess, because I've had some wine, but, um, so I got a book and it just starts making me think about it. So I got a book in the mail from, um, a reader and she's actually an author now because of us doing the ending series fan fiction and doing the Aww. giveaway stuff. Um, one of my giveaways a long time ago was uh, editing with Holly. And I guess she had a manuscript. And um, so anyway, she ended up being like, they're, they're self-published. I want to be an author. I want to be like them. I want to, you know, write like Lindsay, whatever, blah, blah, blah. And she sent me a book and she dedicated it to me and Holly and a bunch of other people who helped her on this amazing journey. But I'm just sitting there going like, Tahara did that for us and now we're at a place where we're doing that for other people and I think that's like the coolest thing ever you know oh, it's like that is really neat so I don't know it's just really really cool but um I don't know it's just like paying it forward you know I don't yeah. know this is really really cool but I picked that up yesterday at the post office so I was really excited huh that yeah. is really cool but I don't know. We're kind of at that place where it's like, we can be really cool. Like, obviously we're not Tahara. I'm not saying we are guys. <laughs> Let's not take it out of context, but I'm just saying like, you know, we can, I don't know, have an impact, which is really cool. And yeah, I want people to be able to do what we wanted to do, you know? Yeah. yeah. And you can people, people, you can. Yeah. I know. We didn't know you could, but when we did it together, we made it happen. And now look at us. <laughs> Yeah. Times have changed though. It's way easier now. And there's so many tools and yeah. Yes. Yeah, I we know can go on about that another time, but yeah. um, this is not that kind of podcast. Nope. Um, okay. Final thing. Oh yeah. Go ahead. Do you want me to say it? Yeah. Go ahead. Okay. Um, so I feel like I'm going to get the date wrong. Um, after the ending, <laughs> we'll just make it up. doesn't matter. Was published on February 20, 20, I would say 4th. I don't know if it's 22nd or 24th, but just okay, it. let's say 24th. Okay. Um, a February, uh, after the ending was first published on, uh, and this is all very confusing because we did like a, re a revision early on. I don't know. Anyway, first published on February 24th of 2013. 13. Um, <clears throat> we, Team Lindsay, yeah. uh, is going to do a special edition hardcover with some extra fun, uh, lots of goodies, lots of goodies, uh, like, pr like early stuff that nobody else has ever seen. We're going to do some sketches. We're going to do some, oh, Stuff well, from our uh, yeah. initial notebooks. Stuff we would never, ever share otherwise. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. 
So uh, that is coming uh, February 20 something, probably 24th of 2023. 10th anniversary special edition hardcover. You heard it yeah. here first. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll keep you posted. We have no idea. It's going to be awesome though. So yeah. And we're not exactly sure exactly anything at all. Um, other than that, there is going to be a 10th anniversary special edition. Um, there is always a chance that there could be a limited edition version of the special edition. That's like extra fancy. We don't know. Yeah. We'll see. Hey guys, you know how we are. We, we <laughs> it doesn't matter. Like just stay <laughs> tuned. It's, it's all good. <laughs> all right. Um, yeah th there's no uh, like I don't know how to end an episode that is just no. us okay so, here's to you <laughs> yeah so anyway that's us you know rambling as always uh drinking some wine drinking some bubbles uh, a really so long episode roll. yeah really long episode sorry for listening to all this rambling but we <laughs> thought you guys would really like this uh, especially we know a lot of you found us through the ending series so uh, that's why we wanted to kind of you know circle back and talk about some fun stuff going on so Anyway, and you know, it's kind of time, you know, we haven't visited the series in a long time. So, I mean, I guess maybe me a little bit more just because I've had to, yeah, you know, dredge up old books and figure out what the hell we wrote so I could incorporate some crossover characters and other stuff. But overall, like it's been a really long time since we were really, you know, in this world. And so we wanted to kind of play around with it a little bit. And we've been talking about this 10th anniversary edition and what we wanted to do. So we got kind of excited. So anyway, oh, um, wait, pause. Yes, pausing. Um, <laughs> I do want to say for people who are like, what's up with the ending legacy? Uh, we are going to be continuing that series, uh, which mm -hmm. starts with World After. World After? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Don't worry. Yeah, we'll have more information for you this next year. Um, yeah. But yeah, so that we're definitely moving forward with that. Um, yeah, so we'll keep you for we'll keep you posted on everything moving forward. Um, and then yeah, I mean, as always, thanks for listening to us <laughs> jibber jabber and <laughs> go on tangents and talk about nonsense. Um, I do want to say quickly before we sign off that um, anybody who follows or reads the Forgotten Lands uh, Titan Tempest release is going, that's the kind of Viking meets Black Sails uh, installment in uh, that series and that post apocalyptic dystopian world. Um, anyways, that comes out November 9th. And so that week, November 9th, which is a Tuesday through that Friday, I'm doing giveaway stuff in my reader group. So make sure, um, that if you're not in my reader group that you check it out, if you want some free stuff, uh, you know, I'm not going to do, I usually do like one of those really long, like mm. a million posts all days. I'm not going to do that, but I'm going to do a few big giveaway posts. Um, so I think people are still going to be really excited about um, I'm just going to be coming back from that retreat. So trying to take on an all day giveaway is going to be very difficult for me. Um, but anyway, we'll still do some fun stuff. Uh, so make sure you check that out. Uh, Lindsay Pogues reader group, I think is what it's called, but we'll link to it. <laughs> okay. Um, I don't even know what my own reader group's called. So there you go. Uh, <laughs> that does wrap up this episode though. So thank you all for listening. Again, uh, we know we like to kind of get off topic once in a while, but we do appreciate you hanging in there. Next time, LF and I are going to be chatting with best-selling romance author Emma Chase about her new best-selling audiobook, Getting Real. And as always, if you enjoyed the episode, please leave us a review wherever you listen. And don't forget to join the No Shelf Control Facebook group um, to hear more about our upcoming guests and whatnot. So... Uh, check the show notes for a link to our Patreon if you'd like to support the production of the show. And until then, stay safe, everybody. Happy reading, writing, authoring, listening, adventures. <laughs> <laughs>